What is up, homies? Welcome back to another trailer reaction from Heroes Reforged. We are reacting to the brand new trailer for Andor. As yeah. I like to call it, Mexcellence in That's space. Right. <laughs> Mexcellence in space, baby. We got space Mexicans and they're running shit. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. Hector, this yeah. is like your favorite Star Wars character, isn't he? I love Cassian Andor so goddamn much that I've been in this fight since I was six years old. I can't wait to see this show. Also, if you guys have yet to subscribe and we're giving you all this free juicy goodness, hit that button, make it gray, because if it's red, mm. I'm going to slowly pull Adam's shoulder until it rips off of his body. I'm, He's pulling, I'm it. pulling it. He's pulling it right now. <laughs> slice, slice and dice, baby. Slice and dice. Also, be sure you guys check out our Patreon link down in the description below as well. We've got uncut reactions for a ton of the shows that we've been watching. We're also adding movie reactions as well. We watch RRR. We're going to do the Lord of the Rings, some Halloween movies. We're going to do Prey this week. Lots of really fun stuff coming up. Additionally, we will be doing Andor as well as a reaction series. And we found out today that it's being delayed by three weeks. So cool. We're going to have to do three episodes on the first night instead of two. Interesting. 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 Well, Avoiding we'll Lord see of the Rings. We'll I get that. I get Good it. times. You guys ready to jump into this trailer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Hector, can I have my ready. shoulder back really quick just for this trailer? Yeah, let me just uh, pop it there, you go. There, there you go. go. there you go. There you go. All right. There you go. Here we go. Nervous. These, these trailers have been, Ooh. I know, dude, they've been so oh, good. Wow. Ooh. Yep. Have we ever seen one that low before? To steal from the Empire? Not regularly. You just walk in like you belong. Ooh. They're so proud. Nice. Of Galactic Senate. The Senate. So fat and satisfied. They can't imagine that someone like me. Oh, wow. So we're going way back. Someone like me, a Latino. Let's go. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Cassian Ander. The Empire is choking us so slowly. We're starting not to notice. Yo. This looks so what good. Is this? Wouldn't you rather give it all to something real? My God. Excellent. Oh, yeah. I need all the heroes I can get. For the greater good. Call it what you Oh, want. is that Saw Gerrera? Oh my oh, god! What? what we got oh. Saw! Oh, wow! It's fermenting out there, Saw. Pockets of fermenting. Damn. Wow. My net. Are you a fish? Or are you a thief? I'm a pescado! <laughs> You're slipping. <laughs> I'm not slipping. I've just been hiding for too long. Oh, wow. Uh, Luthen is definitely not making it out of this show alive, my friends. Wow. As long as everyone thinks I'm an irritation, there's a good chance they'll miss what I'm really doing. What are you really doing? Ooh. God damn it, this show looks amazing. This is what revolution looks like. I'm tired of losing. Hell oh, yeah. So we're jumping in between time a lot. Yo. Holy oh shit. <laughs> Those visual effects are stellar. Yo, stellar stars guard. Those of you have that are unreal. Holy well, let shit. Let me loop this. I'm oh just going to keep watching this while we talk. That, so that I'm going to. Taylor I mean, had the. Fire! That trailer oh had my God. fire, dude. So that energy I, was. I will disclose this. I downloaded the trailer earlier this morning off of the press website, so I did watch it just now from the like really high quality version. Uh -huh. I, you got, I have to send this to you. This is unfucking oh. believable. Hey, yeah, we, I'm watching a little YouTube version, and it looked <laughs> clean. Damn, it yeah. looked good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I know, I know. Tony Gilroy has talked about how people were asking, how, "Does this have a lot of volume? Is this a lot of practical sets? Like, it looks incredible. It's probably." like i don't know i want to say it's maybe one of the best looking so far just visually projects and like mandalorian was pretty amazing when it came out but this just like has that extra layer of polish that looks like they really put a budget on the screen full stop it's it, weird it, it has it has that layer of polish but it has also a little bit of like extra realism like yeah. given the fact that we don't see a lot of like heavy saber usage 
a lot of like craziness really happening. It looks very grounded. It, I mean, Rogue yeah. One, it gave me Rogue One vibes right off the bat with, you totally. know, the green landscape and the trees and things like that. And then just Diego Luna, come on, man. Come yeah. on, man. Every it, time this, he speaks, this, I get goosebumps. This, this absolutely, it is mind blowing that this is a television series. Dude, yeah. this that, looks like a, like a, this looks like a theatrical experience. Yes, yeah. it does. And it's, it's not to knock any of the Disney plus shows, whether it's Marvel show or a, or a, no, no. a Star Wars show that's come out i think that they have all had really incredible moments of visual effects and there's in every one of those shows have also had moments where it's like okay this show has a budget and you know yeah. this one probably cbb could have been better but um this is just such a well-cut trailer yeah that vibe was so thumping and so intense and it it this it, it, it's like blowing my mind that this because this looks as good as Rogue One, a movie yeah, that came out in totally. 2016, which I think is in one of the most- six years, that's amazing how far we've I, jumped in tech. I think yeah. Rogue One is one of the best looking Star Wars movies or Star Wars projects ever. It is totally. really, really beautiful. And had yeah, that yeah. extra challenge of like, not only does it have to look new and clean and solid, but it has to fit in right into that right. 70s exactly. world. Whereas like the sequel trilogy could have pushed things a little bit further visually and, and on all of that stuff. But my God, this trailer- <laughs> Was so, so good. I have, Dude, a, this I have thing a question slaps. for you guys. I have yeah. a question for you guys. So there's been a lot of criticism about the volume, and sure. lately there's been a lot of criticism about VFX. Of course. How much do you think the pandemic had to do with the quality of the VFX and the volume specifically? Because oh, I know the question, volume yeah. was a huge helper in the pandemic, like deep, deep pandemic. They were still shooting things. Volume was like the 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 lifesaver, the game changer. We would have not gotten movies like Thor Ragnarok if it wasn't because of that, right? Or, exactly. No, no. So, Thor Ragnarok, Thor Love and Thunder. Or sorry, yeah, Thor, Thor Love and Thunder. And, Thunder, yeah. and right? also and the, and Batman, also the Mandalorian and, also, and the Batman and all that stuff, yeah. right? So do you guys think that we are going to get a point with things like the volume and the combination of VFX where we probably won't even be able to tell the difference anymore? Because now we have full production studios mm -hmm. going and like everything's coming back to full speed. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I think so. And I think, you know, just like green screen, blue screen, front projection, rear projection. If you start relying on one technology too much, everything starts to look and feel the same. We had that mm -hmm. in the early 2000s when everybody was relying on green screens for everything. Everything felt like a green screen movie. If you look at everything from like 1999 to about 2007, 2008, everything that's like a high concept sci fi fantasy film felt very green screened. But then once you had filmmakers like Nolan come through and Spielberg start dipping into more sci fi stuff in the early 2000s, you started seeing a lot more of a balance between CG, green screen, practical. And I think that to me is where like the special sauce is. When you can take all of these technologies, blend them all together to all support each other to elevate the film. That's how you do it. You don't just rely on one because the moment you rely on one, you're already limiting yourself. Like you have to creatively challenge yourself, I think, as a creator, and you have to figure out what is the best tool to use for this particular sequence or shot. I think Matt Reeves did incredibly well using a balance of practical elements for the Batman on mm -hmm. the car chase, but then also, you know, sprinkling in stuff from the volume. Some stuff is obviously CG. Like, I think to me, that is sort of the best balance and where you usually find the best product. I mean, Chris Nolan always talks about how he doesn't tend to rely too much on visual effects. That doesn't mean he doesn't have visual effects in his movies. He has a lot. Right. But, and I remember I tweeted about this a few days ago. I think that the job of the filmmakers should be to give the visual effects artists the most amount of tools to play with yeah. and the most amount of resources is to create things because the more uh, the more you give them not always but for the most part if you give them a lot of ways to create something then i think that they'll be able to create something better other than limiting them you can only use the volume you can only use the green screen shot give them some variety give some flavor so they can play around and be creative i think that's how you get something like this that looks so polished so clean so high quality and like hector was saying this is only six years after rogue yeah. one but to see the technological advancement jump and the quality especially jump mm -hmm. and we we just saw Obi-Wan Kenobi, and this is nothing against anybody on, on the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, but yeah. this looks so much more sophisticated and higher budget compared to that. You can almost tell that just by looking at the visuals, and that's how I it's, think at least. The other thing I have to mention too is, you know, we're sitting here geeking out about the visuals. A and for me, and I think for all of us, it always is going to come back to, it comes down to the story. That mm -hmm. uh, if it's not a great story, the visual effects don't mean jack squat. It's the, yeah, sto totally. it's the stories that we we keep revisiting and we keep rewatching that keeps some of these movies with great visuals eternal and keeps them alive. And thankfully, just from this trailer at, a, at like a story level, it feels engrossing. It feels new and fresh. 
It feels intense. I'm just so happy for Diego that he gets to come back, that he was a part of this process from the beginning and really had that kind of ownership of this character, which he's talked about. He talked about it at Star Wars Celebration. And I'm happy that it seems like everybody on this project is bringing their A game. This cast mm. looks awesome. These performances look phenomenal. Yeah. And the story looks so, so good. And, and what I love about it is we know how Cassian's story ends. Yeah. To me, mm -hmm. this has that potentiality to just make Rogue One even better. I keep freaking out with that guy that looks like Malcolm McDowell, this four-armed guy with yeah. the white hair. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, is that a CG character? Is it a puppet? Yeah. It's like a Maz Kanata thing. Anyway, yeah. thankfully the story for me is is the thing that just that I'm like so intrigued by. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot wait to watch this show. And I think it's just going to enhance all of the kind of Star Wars that surrounds it, whether it's the Obi-Wan that comes before it, right. Rebels, or, you know, that's happening at the same time, or mm -hmm. Rogue One, it's a new hope. It's It looks great. Yeah, and I think the thing that I that I'm super excited about, which I, I don't honestly think, I don't know if I would have had this opinion six years ago, even when Rogue One came out. I'm really excited to see a political thriller in the Star Wars universe because we've had so much of Jedi and this all kinds was, of stuff. And like this it's just fighting fascism. That's yeah. all this show is. Yeah, <laughs> literally, like, literally. <laughs> and the fact that we get to have an expansion yeah. on Saw Gerrera's character, who's who has now become such a major player in the in-between time of episode three and four and so important to the history of Star Wars. But then also, you know, we get a huge expansion on Mon Mothma, a character who is in return of the Jedi almost 40 years ago and was just mm -hmm. in one freaking scene. That is so cool that we're awesome. able to now go back and like expand these character stories. We're going to see a new part of Coruscant it looks like. I mean, there's a ton of new planets on here but it'll be interesting to go back to Coruscant to see what it looks like during the Imperial Reign. We've never really seen that in the movies because the movies after the prequel trilogy don't really go back to Coruscant. But it is the central system of the Republic. It is like it is literally like kind of like the DC, the Washington DC of the, of the universe. Mm -hmm. So I want to know what's happening there and how they're dealing with the rise of the emperor and like all of that political stuff. So it's just going to be cool to see this. And yeah, it just looks like a very enticing, intriguing story. I have a feeling because it is 12 episodes, 24 episodes total, we're obviously going to be going through a lot of time because mm -hmm. we see a young Cassian Andor in here through multiple parts of his life. We know that the second season is going to go through multiple years as well, leading right into Rogue One. So it's going to be really interesting to see how much of this character story we're actually going to go through. Like we could go through almost a decade or more, obviously, because we see him as a kid here as well of his life and story, which I think will be really, really cool. So by the time, you know, if you're even if you're a new Star Wars viewer and you're watching this for the first time, you get to Rogue One, you have literally watched this entire person's life just within a six year span of time of this being created. But you'll witness 15, 20 years of his history and you'll have have such a fulfilling experience when you watch that movie, which I just love stuff like that. So this this looks so good. Yeah. And I like that Cassian Andor potentially, Garrett Grant, we haven't seen the show this show is poised to make him be a pivotal character in the star wars yes. saga he yep. is like the spark of the rebellion he is the one that like without cassian there's no luke there's no leia there's like none of this stuff that everything that they were based off of and i love that because it's not super powered people who started and maintained the rebellion it's not force users it's, it's us the the nitty-gritty down and dirty like people who are willing to try and go and get it done and it, it seems like it's going to be a really inspiring story of like standing up to fascism, like taking the bullies out, really standing up for your beliefs and making sure that everybody is treated equally. And I don't know, I think it's a perfect story for these times because that feels very, very poignant at this point. Mm -hmm. It's like you said, my friend, let's get down to the nitty gritty. To the nitty gritty, my friend. And save me mm. a piece of that corn. I will fight fascists <laughs> every day. Every, it's my favorite thing to do. Every day. Every, every day. day. <laughs> <laughs> Why have we not done a watch along of Nacho Libre on this channel yet? I think we need to do that. <laughs> Patreon. We'll do that on Patreon. We got it. We got to do it. Going into Andor. That's how we connect it. Yeah. Right there. That's what we do. Yeah. The intergalactic Nacho. Say it again to my face. Say it again to my face. Again to my face. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? Oh. If Cassian Andor doesn't say punch to the face in this show. <laughs> <laughs> missed opportunity. Diego, missed opportunity. That's all we're saying. That's all we're saying. Oh, Season man. Three. Cannot wait. Okay. Looks great. Let us know, guys, in the comments below what you think about the show. Any theories where you think it could go? Some of the storylines maybe you think that it could pull from, whether it's from Legends novels, from current novels, from comic books. It's such a vast, expansive timeline as well. Could be up to 15 years of time. So it'd be really cool to see if, aside from Saw Gerrera, any other characters make make tiny little appearances in this show. It'd be really, really cool to see. We had some surprises in Obi-Wan Kenobi with the Emperor. Maybe he could show up here again. Who knows? That could be really really fun let us know subscribe if you haven't already we'll see you guys in the next reaction bye come on again